If it bleeds, it leads. It's a mantra that can describe the types of stories covered by media outlets. Murders, fires, robberies. Those are generally top stories. But not the unfathomable crime of filicide. There are five specific motives for filicide, classified as one, altruistic, two, acutely psychotic, three, accidental filicide or fatal maltreatment, four, unwanted child, and five, spouse revenge filicide. We're gonna take a journey and find out what all of these are about. In altruistic filicide, at the moment of the killing, they often feel like they're acting out of a sense of love and protection. A prime example of altruistic filicide would be Andrea Yates. She had a delusional belief that if she didn't take her five children's lives before the age of accountability, they would all go to hell because of her defective mothering. So she drowned her five babies, one by one, in the bathtub. Houston, Texas. After her husband, Rusty Yates, left for work, Andrea Yates, who was reportedly suffering from extreme postpartum depression, filled the bathtub with water. She then proceeded to drown her three youngest boys and then put their bodies on the bed and covered them. Her oldest son, seven-year-old Noah, allegedly became terrified after he saw his baby sister floating in the bathtub. He reportedly tried to run away but Yates caught him and then held him down until he was dead. The crime scene was the stuff of nightmares and the case soon made national headlines. That's it and that's all. Let's look at some cases of altruistic filicide. In Houston today, reports of a terrible crime and a family that has been destroyed. Police say a mother has confessed to drowning her five children in the bathtub. Here's ABC's Mike Bunfriend. Houston police say it was the children's mother, 36-year-old Andrea Yates, who called 911 from her home near the Johnson Space Center. When the uh, responding officer first arrived, he was met by the woman at the door. She was still breathing hard at that time, and she said to the officer, I just killed my children. Their ages range from six months to seven years old. The police found four of the children under a sheet on a bed, and the fifth in a bathtub. Police believe the mother drowned all of them. Patricia Silas is a next door neighbor who invited three of the children to a birthday party last weekend. They were brought over by their father. Their mother stayed home. And my husband asked them how come the wife is not there and he said she stayed home because she's in a depression mood. Today the husband told police that his wife is suffering from depression and is on medication. The husband is an engineer with a space shuttle program and was at work this morning when police were called to his home. Police say they are about to charge his wife with five counts of capital murder. Mike Von from ABC News, Houston. Police believe Lashandra Armstrong of Orange County, New York, killed herself and three of her children by driving her minivan into the Hudson River. One child managed to escape. 
Police announced that the possible murder-suicide took place after Armstrong was involved in a domestic dispute. Officials say that Armstrong had all four of her children in the minivan when she drove it into the Hudson River. Armstrong's 10-year-old son, LaShawn, managed to slip out of the van by rolling down the power window, which was still functioning. Once he made it out, he swam back to shore. A passerby found him soaking wet and took him to the firefighters. This is a picture of the two-year-old victim, Lance Pierre. LaShawn told them his mother had just driven into the river with his brothers and sister. He may have been suffering some hypothermia from the 45 degree waters when he told them about his escape. This is the 11 month old victim, Leanna Pierre. Police have been responding to a domestic dispute call at the woman's home about six blocks away from the river when they heard what happened. Officers arrived to find an empty house. And minutes later, LaShawn was dropped off at the fire station. Armstrong's neighbors were shocked. I just know that she works and she goes to school. She's always with the kids playing. Amazing, said Carmen de Vila. The Good Samaritan Meve Ryan that gave LaShawn a ride gave a chilling account of what happened. Before she went into the water, she managed to get into the back seat and hold all the kids at once and said, if we're going to die, we're going to die together. The children's father, Jean Pierre, decided not to allow the children to be buried with their mother and had a separate service for her. I could not have asked for better children. That was the last Instagram post from this mother before she murdered her two adult children in apparent murder-suicide. For a mother and her two children in Atlanta today, police discovered the bodies of Marcia Edwards and her adult children Christopher and Aaron at their Cobb County home last week. Investigators believe Mrs. Edwards shot her two children, then turned the gun on herself. Fox 5's Deidre Dukes was on hand as hundreds gathered at Cascade United Methodist Church in southwest Atlanta for today's moving memorial service. Don't focus on what we don't know. Focus on what we do. This family was the embodiment of love. Those words from the Major and Edwards families during Wednesday's memorial service. Hundreds of mourners packed the church sanctuary for the emotional service. Family and friends sharing fond memories of Dr. Marcia Edwards and her two children, Christopher Redding Edwards II and Aaron Victoria Edwards. A graduate of Elon University, Christopher worked as a digital content manager in film and entertainment in the Atlanta mayor's office. Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms has known the Edwards family for over 20 years and called Christopher a breath of fresh air, cheerful, helpful, and a true gentleman. She said his sister Erin, a student of Boston University who interned with the city of Atlanta, was poised, graceful, confident, and eager to contribute. Friends, classmates, and colleagues recalled Christopher's kind spirit, generous nature, and sense of humor. Friend Derek Lottie Jr. called Chris the absolute best person he had the pleasure of spending time with. Aaron's best friend, Maya Foreman, said she genuinely cared for, loved, and wanted the absolute best for everybody around her. Longtime friend Terry Porter knew Marcia Edwards for over 50 years. She described Dr. Edwards as a devoted mother someone you could count on through and through, and said the women shared laughs, secrets, and more laughs, and the unbreakable bond of sisterhood. 
As loved ones grieve the loss of this beautiful family, Reverend Dr. Walter Kimbrough spoke of the great love they shared for one another, telling those in attendance, don't take your family life for granted. Don't just tell folks in your family you love them. Show them by your actions. In Atlanta, Deidre Dukes, Fox 5 News. New information on the investigation into the death of a little boy in Harlem. Prosecutors tonight charged the boy's stepfather with murder. 34-year-old Ryan Cato is also charged with endangering the welfare of a child. Police believe the boy suffered years of abuse. Eyewitness News reporter Naveen Dhaliwal joins us from Harlem with the story. Naveen. Yeah, sadly, Sandra, with the type of injuries this boy had on him, that may be the case, and he may have been enduring that pain for years now, according to investigators. 34-year-old Ryan Cato is now charged with murder and endangering the welfare of a child accused of killing his stepson. Uh, he was walked out of the 32 police precinct just in the last half hour. His head was down at one point. He had no words for us, but investigators had a lot of questions from him over the last two days of interrogations. Now, police got a 911 on Saturday afternoon for an assault on the fourth floor apartment at the St. Nicholas Houses on West 131st Street. When, when officers entered that apartment, what they saw, no one should have to. They found 10-year-old Aiden laying on the living room floor with severe bruises, both old and new. He was not alive. Now, police immediately brought in Aiden's mother and stepfather in for questioning right now again his stepfather ryan cato charged with murder and endangering the welfare of a child and police say aiden had severe trauma to his body but the medical examiner will determine the exact cause of death this case involves horrific abuse of a 10 year old boy <sighs> abused by his mother and her boyfriend an angel says they have bruises on their face. Body cam video, a deputy at the door of defendant Heather Barron. Okay. It is one of 22 recordings and videos included in the grand jury testimony that led to the charges. Barron and her boyfriend Kareem Leva accused in the murder of 10-year-old Anthony. The couple allegedly beat, starved, and tortured the Lancaster fifth grader. His siblings testified that Leva even demanded that they punch their brother. That you guys are hosting Fight Club and encouraging uh, the two boys to uh, box, you know, scratch and everything else to each other. Oh, wow. Family members who had reported the abuse say they have been waiting for seven months ever since Anthony's death to know what happened to him. Today, a court ruling allowed the release of the grand jury transcripts. What makes me anxious is not knowing what really happened, why it happened, and to be honest, I don't think we'll ever know why, but I would at least like to know what happened. The DA told the grand jury that Anthony's death was not about drugs or mental health issues, that it was intentional murder by torture, that the mother took no steps to stop it and could have taken him earlier earlier to the hospital, but didn't. No date is set yet for trial. Bail for the couple, $2 million each. While most kids, eight years old, were playing games, riding bikes, and just being kids, Gabriel Fernandez was struggling to survive and to avoid being beaten and abused. Despite six investigations into abuse allegations involving the mother, the Los Angeles County Department of Children and Family Services left Gabriel in the home of monsters. In May 2013, paramedics arrived at Gabriel's house in Palmdale, California, and the child died shortly after being taken to the hospital. Gabriel's mother allegedly told the paramedics that her son was into self-mutilization and her boyfriend allegedly told authorities that he had beaten Gabriel for lying and being dirty.
both his mother and her boyfriend have been charged with murder. According to autopsy reports, little Gabriel died having suffered a cracked skull and three broken ribs. His skin had bruises, burn marks, and scars. He had BB pellets embedded in his lung and groin. Two of Gabriel's teeth had been knocked out of his mouth. According to the LA Times, despite the fact that Gabriel was barely old enough to read and write, he had reportedly written a suicide note. One person, Gabriel's first grade teacher, Jennifer Garcia, tried to save him, basically had CPS on speed dial. But it didn't do any good. She told them all about the abuse she was aware of. pictures in the background are horrific. On July 31st, the four Child Protective Services caseworkers assigned to Gabriel Fernandez were fired. DCFS union representative David Green blames funding for the issue. As I mentioned at the start of the video, a form of fatal maltreatment is Munchausen syndrome. And that's basically where a caregiver makes up or causes an illness or an injury. Literally, they just make it up and they will even start to treat this illness or take this person to the hospital. Um, it is considered one of the most dangerous forms of child abuse. So let's talk about this. It's an unusual case. Lacey Spears, a Rockland County mother, charged with murdering her son by poisoning him with salt. But Spears insists the hospital is to blame. 48 Hours' Troy Roberts has the only interview with the mother who says all she did was try to save her son's life. I lost my five-year-old son, and I'm very saddened that I'll never get to watch him grow up. How does your son die? His death certificate says homicide. Much of Garnet Spears' young life was spent seeking medical attention for often unexplained health issues. He was in and out of the hospital for the first nine weeks of his life. And the biggest problem we had was we couldn't get him to eat, so he was losing weight. Garnet had surgery at nine months old to insert a feeding tube. They were hopeful that within time he wouldn't have so much problems eating. In January 2014, five-year-old Garnet was taken again to a hospital. He was admitted with seizure-like symptoms. Later during that hospital stay, Garnet is in distress, stops breathing, and tests showed high levels of sodium, which caused his brain to swell. This is my five-year-old son on life support. Two days later, Garnet is officially declared dead. Doctors could not figure out how Garnet's sodium level had gotten so high unless someone had given him salt. Five months after Garnet's death, Lacey Spears was charged with murder. I didn't kill my son. 
I never poisoned this little boy. His brain swelled and it led to his death. And, and some time before the trial we have now, a reasonable time that before she goes and faces that evidence? She did face the evidence. Right. And we'll show you what happens uh, okay. during the trial. A night. interview. Okay. Troy Roberts, thank right. you so much. So she lied to us. And we might have had to go through a whole bunch of investigating and praying and hoping. <laughs> but we caught a break. A really big break. New York investigators suspect Lacey Spears has just killed her own five-year-old son. The boy dying just hours after doctors in this hospital gave him a clean bill of health. Cops claim Spears poisoned her son with lethal levels of salt. And now they believe they have proof. Actual videotape of the heartbreaking murder. Doing an interview with Garnett's kindergarten teacher, who also happened to be a nurse. She said, he was on an EEG, and we said, yes, he was. She goes, well, where's the video to that? I didn't know there was a video. Well, who knew? I didn't know the machine was hooked up to video. Yes, video. Frame by frame, the final moments of Garnett's life. We want to warn you, some of the images are graphic. The video begins when Garnett checks in on Friday, and it records through Sunday when doctors and nurses tell Lacey that Garnett is healthy enough to go home. After medical personnel leave the room, Lacey appears to take Garnett to the bathroom, just outside of camera range. But when they come back into frame... When he came back out of that bathroom, a few seconds, minutes, he turned into the most sick child, burying his head into the bed, the pillow, turning, retching. He was trying to throw up, but we've already know that he couldn't throw up because at nine months old, he had an operation that kept him from throwing up. It's something that will haunt me. It was probably, the, it's the worst video. It's, we actually had to watch a video of a five-year-old child being murdered. Lacey is arrested and charged with murder. You actually were the I one was the actual who arrested, who arrested Lacey. Lacey. And what did she say to you? She didn't say anything. She was instructed not to say a word by her attorney. Lacey's defense team argued she didn't poison her son with salt. You were in the courtroom. I was. Describe Lacey's demeanor. It was uh, different each day. Um, I, I think uh, she looked a little scared one time. She looked mad at other times. And um, once or twice she cried a little bit. But in court, prosecutors slowed down that video to show what appears to be a feeding tube and some substance in Lacey's hands when she returned from the bathroom with her five-year-old son. Prosecutors claim that just off camera in the bathroom, Lacey gave Garnett a lethal dose of salt, which moments later caused his brain to swell and ultimately killed him. But there's more. The videotape evidence also shows Lacey on her phone doing Google searches. She had been on the phone laying in the bed and we observed that. Some of those searches were salt poisoning. On the phone at the time? On the phone, we can connect the time of the phone to the video and the search that she was doing. Unimaginable. He had a right to grow up and a right to grow old and she stole that from him. Lacey Spears is found guilty of depraved indifference murder of a child. Instead of nurturing and protecting a beautiful child, you subjected him to five years of torment and pain. One does not have to be a psychologist to realize you suffer from a mental illness known as Munchausen by proxy. What does this video indicate to you? Well, watching it uh, in court, uh, it has brought tears to many of the jurors. How important was that video in this case? I, I think uh, between the video and the and the amount of salt found in the feeding bags were the were the uh, icing on the cake, if you will. She's sentenced to 20 years to life in prison. Is she a cold-blooded killer? I believe she is. She sat in that hospital room when her child coded and watched him die. She watched his life slip away when there's a chance that if she would have stepped up and told them what she did, may have changed the outcome. In October 1994, Susan Smith said she was carjacked and that 
They left with her two babies in the car. Truth be told, she sent the babies right into the river. They say it's because the man that she was going to be with or her boyfriend didn't want children. So this would be a case of unwanted child filicide. We may never find out. Susan Smith was convicted of murdering her two sons July 22nd, 1995, and is serving two life sentences in a South Carolina prison. So here we are, that October fateful day. A mom with two children, a three-year-old and a 14-month-old, strapped in their car seats in the back of their vehicle. Mom gets out of the car, and at the time, this was a very steep boat ramp. You can see it, you can still see the concrete here that's left over. Mom jumps out of the vehicle, and that car goes down this steep incline, which you can see here, gains enough momentum to where the vehicle is gaining enough speed to hit this water. It initially goes out about 30 feet, floats another 30 feet, or yeah, about 30 feet, they said, and then subsequently sinks. But here, not only is that horrifying to be thinking about and terrible, I can't even comprehend it, but she's standing right here watching the whole thing go down. So the obvious question at this point is, what does she do next? Well, the alibi has to begin. I want to say to my babies <laughs> that your mama loves you so much and your daddy, these whole families love you so much. <laughs> and you guys have got to be strong because you are, we, 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 I just know, I just feel in my heart that you're okay, but you got to take care of each other. <laughs> Your mom and daddy are gonna be right here waiting on you when you get home. It hurts to know that um, that I would be accused or even thought that I would ever do anything to harm my children. As a mother, it's only a natural instinct to protect your children from any harm. And the hardest part of this whole ordeal is not knowing if your children are getting what they need to survive. And um, it, it hurt. It hurts real bad. Here's a story that's breaking at 6 o'clock. It's all centered around the three people you see on your screen. The key pieces in a Middletown murder case. On the left is James Hutchinson. Police say the six-year-old was killed, allegedly by his own mother, and the woman in the middle, her name is Brittany Gosney, and his body was thrown into the Ohio River by Gosney and the man on the right, her boyfriend, James Hamilton. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Rob Williams. And I'm Chris Riva. We begin team coverage tonight, this rapidly developing case. Let's send things now to Ken Brown. Now, this is a difficult story to swallow, to say the least. Court records show that Brittany Gosney killed her six-year-old son after attempting to leave him in a Preble County park. Now, both Gosney and her boyfriend, James Hamilton, were in court here in Middletown behind me. A young mother attempts to abandon her six-year-old child in a large rural state park, driving off, dragging the child, and ultimately killing the young boy who was desperately trying to get back in his mother's car. The print on these court documents are enough to leave a horrific imprint in the back of your brain. No, no, no six-year-old needs this. No six-year-old deserves this. Um, this, is, this is heartbreaking for all of us. Court records show Brittany Gosney admitted to driving her six-year-old son, James Hutchinson, to Rush Run Park in Preble County and attempting to leave him in the parking lot. Gosney allegedly told detectives the boy tried to get back inside the car, and when he did, 
she sped off, dragging him. The court documents say that she returned 30 to 40 minutes later to find the boy dead with an injury to his head. That's when she took the body and returned home. The police chief revealing today that James's two siblings were along for the unimaginable ride. Both were not hurt. Um, the mother is not showing much remorse at this time, um, but uh, she has confessed to uh, doing this. That's why we're able to get the charges. Um, we'll know more once uh, James is recovered and we can get a coroner to do an autopsy. Recovering the body will be difficult. Police records indicate both Gosney and her boyfriend, James Hamilton, admitted to dropping the young boy's body in the Ohio River. While multiple agencies searched for James's body, his mother appeared before a judge, seemingly struggling to understand basic court proceedings. You like court appointed counsel, ma'am? I don't understand. You want to talk to a lawyer? Where's Officer Hoover? Well, he's not in here right now. What about the well, I have a learning disability, so I'm not understanding what you're saying. She seemed to be communicating fine. She understands right from wrong. She understood her constitutional rights. While Gosney and her boyfriend wait a week for their preliminary hearings, a community and even detectives struggle with the details of the case. I'm just sitting there, you know, I mean, poor six-year-old has no idea, you know, what, what's going on and, and what's happening. Um, and for the other kids to go through this, too, um, it's just heartbreaking. Gosney's bond has been set at a million dollars. Her boyfriend, James Hamilton's bond, has been set at $100,000 for his involvement in all of this. Both are expected back in court on Monday the 8th. Reporting in Middletown, Ken Brown, Fox 19 Now. Again, we call that unwanted child filicide. They don't want the babies, they just get rid of them. It's really sad, y'all. If it bleeds, it leads. <laughs> it's a mantra that can describe the types of stories covered by media outlets. Murders, fires, robberies, those are generally top stories. But not the unfathomable crime of filicide. 